Hello, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how the, the dog bone and t-bone filleting tools that are available in Aspire and VCarve Pro can be used when cutting parts and shapes out of flat sheet material. On the right hand side of the screen here you'll see that we have a, a sketch for a, a three-legged table. Uh, the design for this has been done by Bill Young and he's kindly donated the files to us so that we can show you how the tools work. Each of these different parts for the table is cut out of a piece of three quarter inch thick material and then assembled afterwards. You'll see in a moment that we can cut out these little rectangular pocket areas where the legs need to push through into the table surface. Um, what you will see is in the, in the corners of each of the little uh, rectangular areas we're going to have the radius of the cutter and it, effectively if we cut rounds the rectangle the, the parts won't go together because the radius of the cutter will be stopping uh, the shapes from fitting correctly. Let's just delete the image for a moment. Here we've got a, a piece of material that's 96 by 48 inches by 3 quarter of an inch thick. We have the origin in the bottom left hand corner. We have the Z origin on the material surface. Click OK. I'm just going to import the design here. So import design. We're going to import a, a DXF file. Here we've got the, uh, the file that we're working on. It's called the three legged stool.dxf. This has imported the file for us. If we zoom in, so click on the background to de deselect everything. If we zoom into the tabletop for a moment, you'll see, see here that we've got the, the rectangles that when we cut each of the legs, so th this is the bottom foot of the leg, we're gonna, when we cut around the top edge, for example, these little um, these spigots are going to push through into the surface of the table. Now, if we just zoom in again for a moment. So to zoom in, I could use the, the zoom tool, so zoom box. So click and drag a box. Or if you have a middle roller mouse button, simply click and drag, sorry, roll the, the mouse button forward or backwards to zoom in or out. Okay, if we look at this, this little rectangle there, I'm just going to copy that for a moment. So copy just to take a copy, you'll see how why I use that in a moment. If we if we swap to the toolpath tab on the right hand side of the interface, let's just zoom back in there. If we select this rectangular area and we say let's profile machine, so we're going to profile machine around the inside of this selected rectangle all the way through the material, and we'll use a quarter of inch. Let's use a quarter of an inch end mill. If I now say calculate that toolpath. If we go back to the two-dimensional view, we zoom in there for a moment, so zoom in. If we switch on the solid preview, you'll see this is the, the, the diameter of the quarter-inch end mill. You'll see that we have a, an eighth of an inch radius in each corner. Now when we cut around, zoom to the top edge of the table, when we cut around this, this spigot, we're going to form a square corner here that isn't going to fit into that hole. This hole will have the radius in each corner so the two parts aren't going to fit together or they're certainly not going to fit together very easily. So to address that problem if we just undraw the preview for a moment, close the preview and swap back to the drawing tab on the left hand side of the screen. If we use the filleting tools, so create a fillet and the fillet that we're going to create in each corner should always be slightly larger than the radius of the cutter that you're going to actually profile machine around the part with. In this case we're using a, we're going to use a quarter inch end mill so a 0.125 radius so I'm going to say let's fill it the corners with a, a radius that's ten thousandths bigger so 0.135 of an inch and let's let's place little dog bone fillets on each corner you'll see when I place the cursor over a corner the cursor changes to show a little tick to show that we can actually fill it that corner. So if we go around and click on each corner there, close the form for a moment, let's go back to the toolbar tab, double click to edit this and say calculate. A little tip here is if we hold the control key down and calculate, the form stays open and the preview stays open. We don't automatically jump to the three dimensional view. So the tip there was just as you go to hit the calculate button, hold the con control key down. If we don't hold the control key down, then it, it automatically opens the three-dimensional view, the form closes, 
and we're into preview mode which can be for some applications and some users is very useful but in this case I'm just looking to see what's going to happen in the two-dimensional view with this particular toolpath so if we do that again double click to edit if I hold the control key down and say calculate the 2d view stays open and the form stays open so you can experiment with different settings so here we can say okay let's try profiling around the outside preview that isn't really what we want we can say really we need to machine machine around the inch inside of the slot control calculate and it shows us the results without having to jump backwards and forwards between the 2d and 3d views okay so going back to the the little uh, the slot or the groove that we're machining here the quarter inch end mill is now been able to drop into each corner and it machine all of this material away remember I took a copy of the original rectangle if I say edit paste you'll see now that we've got the original rectangle drawn there and this this effectively the rectangle represents the spigot on the on on each of the legs so you can see that the spigot is now going to be able to drop into this area and you'll have a very good very nice and tight snug fit so we've done one of the uh, one of the the little uh, little slots there what we would do now in practice we'd say close go back to the drawing tab would zoom in on each of each of these different uh, rectangles use the filleting tool so create fillet dog bone fillet click on each corner so you go around clicking to edit the the original data the original DXF data you do that on each of the different shapes so we do that in the tabletop when we come to look at the legs for example this is the this is the bottom foot of the leg this these little spigots are going to drop into this disc here so we would we would use the same dog bone filleting tool here so add dog bone fillets and we'd click on each of these areas and we'd go around doing this in turn for each of the different rectangles there but when we look at the the base of this leg we would say we we could put we're going to remember we're going to profile machine around the outside here so we're going to end up with a radius in that corner now that radius is going to stop the spigot from dropping into the dropping completely into this this groove so to address that problem what we would do here is we would say let's fill it that corner now that fill it there the cutter will come in it will profile around there and out the other side but when the the bottom panel is pushed up against this face here you're going to see a little gap there there'll be a little gap where you can see that when looking down onto the the base of the table so the best way around that if we click again it will reset so click to add the the fillet click again and it goes back to the corner this time if we use the t-bone fillet here we can say t-bone fillet there and there so the cutter will come along the edge machine into this area and round now looking down from the top of the table you'll just see a flush surface we won't have this little indentation showing from the the filleting operation so using the t-bone fillets for different areas on the on the uh, on a design will give you better more pleasing results when looking at the table surface again we'd probably we'd run fillets on these corners here so we could we could do the same to make sure that when we when we push when we take this leg and slot it into this leg if we don't have the fillets in each corner we're going to have the radius of the cutter the radius of the cutter stops the parts fitting together so using a, a t-bone fillet will give us much better control over the fit here so we'd say click and click just to to machine those corners out and we would go around and we would do the same on each of each of these corners here so there we've made a mistake I've filleted the wrong edge so click again to put the the uh, put it back to an original sharp corner and click on this edge here and it will put the fillet in the correct place for us same on this side so we would go around filleting each of the different objects as required let's just close the filleting form for a moment let's assume that we've now completed the filleting operation so we've gone around and modified the design 
to allow these shapes to be uh, fitted together correctly after machining out of the three quarter inch ply, the next thing to do is to actually look at the toolpath. But what I've noticed is if I click on this, the top shape of the, uh, the top face of the table, if we use the node editing tool, you'll see that this has been drawn in a CAD package and we've got thousands of little point to point moves. These are little uh, straight line moves. If we drag that apart, okay, say Ctrl Z to fit it back, put it back again. Now, that may not be too much of a problem, but you might see some of these, these little facets on the, the outer edge of the table, um, which may not be what you want. So if we say, uh, control, let's say zoom to fit, we can use the fit curves tool. So instead of using uh, having a vector that's polylines, we can say fit curves. Let's make this to circular arcs. And let's say we want the the resolution to be kept fitted within, say, um, five or six thousandths. Now we say replace the, the selected vector with the new arc fitted vector. So fit the vector. If we now select this and say enter node edit, you'll see now that we've got very, very nice and tidy, very smooth, complete circular arcs here. So this would give us a much better edge on the outer surface of the table. It would also give us a much smaller toolpath file because when the software is calculating a toolpath, if the geometry contains arcs, to get from this point to this point can literally be one line of code. If there's lots of little point to point moves here, then to get from this point to this point may involve a thousand lines of code. So you'll end up with much smaller toolpaths. The machine will probably run a little bit smoother as well. Okay, so we've modified some some of the geometry there, which uh, wasn't going to give us the best results when cutting. Let's now look at um, how we how we would make the most of our our four foot by eight uh, eight foot sheet of material. If we select all of the geometry that we wish to cut, and we use the true shape nesting tool, we can say, okay, we're going to nest these shapes into this material. We're going to cut the shapes out using our quarter inch end mill. We want to leave a little bit of a gap around each part. Let's make that a little bit bigger, say 0.4 of an inch, to make sure there's some material left on. Um, so the, 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 the plywood, for example, doesn't splinter. And let's say we're going to uh, use a vacuum table so it doesn't really matter about the edge border. If we say nest now, so nest, the software's nested the, the sheets along the bottom edge of the ply there. And we could say nest them along the x-axis and nest, oh, let's say control Z, put that back, nest them along X. So now we're filling the, the sheet of material up from the left to the right. So you could machine these, cut the piece of material off and you've still got all of this material to use for another job. Control Z to undo. We may say that we want multiple copies of this part. So let's say the customer comes along, we want three of each of these. So apply nest again the software is now given us three table tops and we should have the one two three four five six seven eight nine so three sets of three legs and the bottom plates we have three bottom plates if we wanted more so control z let's say we wanted six of these so apply and nest again now the software has shown us that we've it can nest the, the tabletops and the, some of the legs into one of the sheets of 4x8 ply. But what, what we'll also notice up in the top right hand corner here is that we have some more information. This is sheet 2. So we put a first sheet of plywood or 3 quarter inch thick material on the machine, cut out all of these shapes. And then to because we're asking this for six of each of these tables, we then have to put a second piece of ply or 3 quarter inch thick material on the table and then cut out the, the additional parts. Now we can swap from sheet one to sheet two. Alternatively, you can just double click with the left mouse button. So there we're looking at sheet one, double click on sheet two, and that becomes the active sheet. Now this is quite important for toolpathing. So if we double click on sheet one, close the nesting form for a moment. So back to the toolpath um, 
toolpath list on the toolpath tab on the right let's say edit the profile toolpath that we've that we've been working on previously so we're going to cut all the way through the material quarter inch m mil now if we click and drag all of the parts on sheet one and say calculate the software has now calculated the toolpaths to to cut those shapes out of our first sheet of material okay so that would be the first toolpath we then go back to the two-dimensional view in fact what i'm going to do is i'm going to say view let's tile these views horizontally so in the bottom view we have the 3d view in the top window we've got the two-dimensional view so we have our first toolpath now i'm going to say okay we now wish to to machine the the second set of parts so sheet two just by double clicking on sheet two we have a toolpath already set up but i'm going to take a copy of that toolpath so to do that we would literally say copy toolpath double click to edit let's make this let's give this a, a more meaningful name so sheet two this time with the we would select the geometry on sheet two and calculate reset the preview and now we'll be able to cut out the parts for on the, on the second sheet of material giving us all of the parts needed to to assemble six tables if we wish to go back to uh, sheet one we would double click to, to make sheet one active double click to edit the toolpath let's give this a a better name now we could instead of just recalculating the toolpath we could select the toolpath open the the larger toolpath list so the toolpath control list you'll see here we've got profile one if we just change the name of this to be sheet one and apply it just updates the name instantly rather than having to to recalculate when we're happy with each of the the, the toolpaths are, are calculated correctly we would then say save the toolpath select the post processor for the machine and save each toolpath independently so we'd say save toolpath for sheet two select sheet one save this toolpath with a different name and then they're both ready to run on the cnc machine so just to summarize if we go back to our design view let's double click to maximize the two-dimensional view if we zoom in here we'll see that we use the the filleting tool so we use the fillet we use the dog bone fillet to take out the corners and let's so we literally just click on each corner and we use the the t-bone filleting tool let's see if we can find one of those there you go so where the parts come together we use the t-bone to give a, a a better result where the the two mating surfaces can sit flush and possibly actually hide the filleted area so that it, it isn't visible on the surface or on the uh, on a, an area that can be seen on the table thank you very much for watching the tutorial